Good afternoon, folks. My name is Tim Wheaton, joined by Brandon, the mechanic, Katino. We are kicking it with Tim and the mechanic. Brandon, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, man. Anytime we can talk kickboxing, you know it's a beautiful day. That's exactly right. Man, it's a great sport. I, I wish kickboxing was kind of bigger stateside, but that's what I kind of wanted to start off with. Uh, you have experience in fighting and glory kickboxing. Uh, and in the last little while here, we have seen a lot of glory fighters leave. Guys like uh, Ed Pereira has left for the UFC. One of their better champions, Duwambe, has walked away as well. Is kickboxing and is glory kickboxing going to be okay? Uh, yeah, it is. I mean, it goes ebbs, ebbs and flows, ebbs and flows. Like you think about people who are in MMA, they leave MMA, then now they're doing bare knuckle or they're going to boxing, you know, or you think about somebody like Clay Collard, you know, he did MMA, then he went to boxing. Now he's back at MMA. Some people say, say they just want to change, you know, want to change things up. They want to challenge themselves, you know, and then, may, and then maybe they might come back. Like you think about like somebody who we're going to talk about later, like a Gohan Saki, you know, he was mm -hmm. in kickboxing, then he left and now he's back. That's true. And Gokhan, yeah, it, 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 we're going to talk about him today. It's exciting to have him back because he's a really exciting fighter to have. But we were also talking about the structure in that right now, Glory Kickboxing and One Championship, who are the premier kickboxing organization on Earth, along with a few others like Infusion and, and a few others, they, they do a little bit more style such as you would see in boxing or mixed martial arts. Whereas what we used to have in K1 was the structure of F1, where you do a bunch of smaller fights leading to the big tournament uh, at the end of the year. Do you have any specific preference like uh, of what works better? Nah, man, you know what it is to me? It's just, I think it's just all about just, uh, just marketing, you know, just, just getting it out there, you know, being, being on websites or, or getting your, TV commercials, whatever it is, to really, to really just get it, just to get in front of people. Like to me, I think that's just what it is. It's just a lot of people don't know where it is, when it is, how to watch it. You know, you get it out there in front of the people. To me, to, to me, it'll, it'll just, it'll just blow up. Yeah, it's it's a matter of getting in front of the right fans because it's a it's a wonderful sport. It just. I wish it was bigger and I wish it was more accessible. I wish it was easier to get your hands on. But this week and next week, we have a few great cards in the kickboxing world. One Championship has its first strike series. They're launching a featherweight Grand Prix and the featherweight title will be on the line. And then a week after that, we have Glory Collision 3, uh, where Rico Verhoeven, their champion, is back. And we will talk about all those fights. Brandon, do you have any preference where you want to start? Hey, man, anything kickboxing is always good to me. Awesome stuff. On one championship, first strike in the main event, we have the inaugural featherweight championship uh, being put out. We have uh, a person who's arguably the greatest kickboxer of all time. You could make the argument. Uh, Giorgio Petrosian, with 104 wins and only two losses, is going to be fighting Superbon, who has 111 wins and only 34 losses. Uh, Petrosian, pound for pound, kickboxing king. Armenian born. He was actually born in the Soviet Union. Uh, he said he had no heating when he was growing up. They had one hour of electricity. They were homeless in Italy. And this is the kind of person that created him to be an amazing fighter that he is today. He has so many titles, I can't even list them all. Uh, about 10 years ago, Fun facts, he had a draw with Buaka, and he's always been seeking the rematch. Now, he never got the rematch. However, now he gets to fight Superbon, who is the top student of Buaka. So it kind of creates a story that you don't often get in kickboxing, because usually guys fight each other like five times, six yeah. times, just because that's the way the world is. Uh, but we actually never got the rematch. And now, for the first time, Petrosian will fight Superbon. What's your breakdown of the match? Who do you like in this one? What do you think, Brandon? Hey man, one, I think it's gonna be a good fight either way because like I said, really these 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 two guys are two are two of the uh, elite elite fighters in this weight class. Um, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, Petrosian been going has been going down as, as the best fighter and he's been having that uh, moniker for like over ten years, you know, just going strong. Um Superbond, I actually I actually came across Superbond uh uh from his Cunlin days. Uh that's that's that that's that's when I first heard about him. He was doing big things in China. And then I think and I think Cunlin Cunlin, I think maybe closed down or they stopped. And then, then he went over to um Infusion. He was doing his thing over there. Uh so to be honest with you, I was thinking about this fight, and of course I'm sure everybody everybody's gonna think that this is Petrosian's fight, because you know he is the best, you know, as they say. But I'm actually I'm actually gonna go with Superbon on this one. Reason being is because I think of uh, Petrosian's fight from Glory 12, which was at Madison Square Garden, where he fought Andy Risty, and Andy mm -hmm. Risty knocked him out. The reason why is because to me, Superbon is an aggressive fighter. He's going to go after it. He's not going to wait and let Petrosian pick him apart. Remember, the guy, the, Petrosian is called the doctor for a reason. Why? He's a surgeon. You know, takes his time, picks you apart, keeps you at bay, uses his jab, moves around. 
I think Superban is just gonna go at him and be like, nah, man, we're gonna make this a dirty fight, and I'm gonna get on and I'm gonna get this knockout. So I'm going with Superban on this one. I just think I think his aggressiveness, also too, I think he has the power edge as well on Petrosian. Because really, like I mean, really, really both these guys they, they aren't really knockout artists, but I just think Superban is more is more aggressive. I think I think he has and he has the I think he has the knockout power to drop Petrosian just like Andy Risty did. Well, I mean, comparing him to Andy Risty is always tough because Andy Risty has such a unique style of kickboxing where you can't exactly emulate it. Uh, however, Georgia Petrosian is very similar in that you wouldn't show if you're teaching kickboxing classes, don't fight like Georgia Petrosian. Don't learn those techniques until you're an expert, right? He mm -hmm. does punching into like holding his hand out there and then frames off. The angles are absolutely brilliant, but no one fights like him, right? Superbon is a really good fighter. And I like what you said about him being so aggressive and he is aggressive and he's very powerful and especially in exchanges. He clearly initiates exchanges and focuses on winning and getting the last strike in exchanges. Uh, he's an extremely good fighter. Uh, block and counter attacks. It is tough with Petrosian to game plan for him because he's not exactly a counter puncher. He's not exactly an aggressive fighter. He he kind of fights in some in-between range, but he knows exactly what he wants to do. Uh, I, I'm going to pick Petrosian in this fight. I, it's, it's, it's a tough fight to pick because I almost feel like we're being cheated out of a better fight. This is a kickboxing rules matchup, and both guys have a little bit more experience and a lot more titles in Muay Thai. Do you think we're being cheated out of having a better fight by not having it be a Muay Thai fight? No, because to me, I really want to say that Petrosian style is really more for kickboxing. Like, to me, Petrosian, mm -hmm. you won't see him in the clinch, really. You know, he might know how to defend the clinch. You know, but I don't, I don't, I don't think he's more clinch oriented. Superbon, on the other hand, maybe because he might want to maybe get those clinch and throw those knees. But then though, he does do flying knees anyway. So who need, who need, who needs a clinch when you're when you're doing flying knees? You know. <laughs> that's that's true enough. Uh, George Petrosian hasn't lost. I mean, in in like you said, since Andy Risty way back in 2013, nearly a decade ago, uh, had a no contest. Superbon is on a huge fight win streak right now, so it's a great matchup in the kickboxing world. This is such a good fight; it is unbelievably good. Um, but yeah, it's it's great to see both of these guys develop over time as well. Both of them have got a lot better than they were a decade ago. So we have so much footage on both guys, and you can see that they've gotten better. This is. This is a great fight. I absolutely adore this matchup. Yeah. But yeah, uh, kickboxing world. I, Petrosian's a good guy. I like him a lot. So I'm going to be picking him in this fight, which isn't a controversial opinion anyway, but it'll be exciting to see what one does. Now, I, I did read, Tapology had this fight listed as in a cage. Have you heard anything else? Like this, it's a kickboxing card. It's purely kickboxing card. Are they doing this in a cage or are they doing this in a ring? I want to say that it probably is going to be in a cage because that's how one does it. That's how that, that that's yeah. how that's how one does, does, does their kickboxing fights. Either way, it's always in a cage. They don't have a ring. Yeah, I I want to say the same thing too. It, but yeah, it's it's their decision. You can do kickboxing in a cage. That's absolutely fine. But yeah, it's so we'll see how that works out. It's going to be a great fight on Friday morning. Are you staying up for it? Are you getting up early for it? Or are you going to catch the tape delay later on? Uh, if I can, I'm going to try to get up early for it because I think it's supposed to be eight thirty on my time. Here's when the main card starts, so I oh, should be up. Bad. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm usually, I'm usually up around that time, so I should be good to go. Awesome stuff. Uh, can we end it kicking off the, uh, or sorry, in the, in the co-main event for the Featherweight Grand Prix, we have Merritt Gregorian, uh, who's 64 wins versus Andy Sauer at 161 wins. Uh, Merritt is a glory lightweight champion, K1 champion and K1 Grand Prix champion, born in Armenia. His family worked multiple jobs before moving to Belgium. Uh, Andy Sauer is just absolutely legendary in the sport of kickboxing and Muay Thai, two-time K1 Max champion, and it's Showtime champion, world Muay Thai champion, Dutch kickboxer. He has amazing wins over guys like city shy super bond he's just an awesome fighter all around however he is about 38 years old with nearly 200 fights professionally to his name so it makes for a really interesting matchup because Merritt is kind of in his prime right now yep. it's 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 a great fight I, this is one of the like you could main event this whole card on this fight that's how good of a fight it is but in sour versus gregorian how do you see it playing out what do, what do you think of this one hey i love me some andy sour man sour power but I don't think this fight is good for him. I think he's going to get stopped, and I think he's going to get stopped in the first round. I mean, Marat Mar 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 Gregorian is just an animal. He's a beast. The dude just goes forward. He, he knows no other direction. Never goes back, doesn't go to the side. He goes forward. His combinations are on point. You know, man uses his hands to his legs, legs to hands. He's got some power. He's got knockouts. I think Andy Sauer is going to get knocked out, and it's going to be in the first round. Like say, like you, like we, like you said, right? Uh, Marat's in his prime. Dude's only thirty. Sour. He's at he's at the late he's at the later end of his thirties. 
like I say, you know, he, he's going, he's getting close to 200 fights. That's a lot of wear and tear on your body, you yeah. know? Um, so I, I, I mean, hey, I'm a fan of Andy Sauer. Hey, hey, if he wins, he wins. That'd be great. But I don't see it happening. I see, I see Marat just going through him. I agree. I think this is a really tough fight for Andy Sauer, style-wise, but mainly due to his age. He's He's been on in years. He's struggling in the last few fights. But style-wise as well, Mar Marat can be a little bit of a slow starter at times, but once he gets going, he's such a powerful combination striker. He mixes high and low really well, uh, and he always wants to be pushing forward. And what I've seen from Andy Sauer in his past fights is that when he is pushed on the back foot, he struggles a little bit defensively. He usually just it's kind of the Dutch style of shelling up rather than throwing counter punches. Uh, I think Andy Sauer needs to be the aggressive fighter if he wants to win this fight, but I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. I think we're getting on into the twilight years of Andy Sauer's career. This is kind of the, uh, unfortunately, he's probably in this sunsetting uh, retirement years at this point. But yeah, Merrick Gregorian, glory lightweight champion. I don't know, it, does he does he still defend it or did he relinquish his title? No, he, he still... you know, yeah, he, he, he relinquished it. He's no longer with glory. He's now with one. Okay, gotcha. Well, it's a great fight. This is this is absolutely one of the great ones. I don't know entirely. Merrick Gregorian says that he is friends with Giorgio Petrosian. I don't know. He said he basically won't fight him. But if you have your featherweight Grand Prix champion and your featherweight champion, I assume you want them to fight. Am I am I crazy for saying that? Yeah, you are. But I'll tell you this. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I'll tell you this. I don't. I don't think uh, Marat's winning it. I think. I think Marat will win, will get make, will make it to the finals. But I don't think he's winning it. Well, I'll tell you, I will tell you who, who my pick is later on. Man, I'm excited. Okay, moving down the card, we got Tayfun Oshkan, and I know I'm going to say it wrong. That's okay. I versus, think. thank you very much. Versus City Chai. Both age 30. City Chai has so many titles. Again, don't have time to list them all. Lupin Yi, stadium champion. Kunlun world champion, glory lightweight champion. Oskan is the two division infusion champion. He's currently on a 13 fight win streak. He's been undefeated in the last five years. Uh, he, he, this is a glory champion versus an infusion champion in one championship. It's a great fight. This is such a good one. Uh, Oskan, incredible power striking, forward pressure. He mixes combinations high and low. Uh, he's always at full power. This guy absolutely loves to throw down with opponents. He's great at catching kicks. Uh, usually opens combination with low with low kicks. Uh, City Jai, patient counter striker, low movement, high pressure, high accuracy, and high power from him. Uh, he always tries to get his opponents to throw first, and he's he's sharp. But City Jai is an absolute legend. Great matchup here. What do you think of it? Fan of both guys. Yeah. Uh, Typhon Oskin, the Turkish Turbine, been a fan of his since his Infusion days, man. Like I said, like he was one of the guys when I started watching Infusion. I was like, oh man, this guy is good. Um, yeah. You know, uh, him and Sidichai, they actually were, they actually were supposed to fight in July, but I think uh, um, um, uh, Oskin had got injured, so they had to reschedule. And of course, now boom, it's good for this. Um, like I said, I've been looking forward to seeing uh, Typhon Oskin, you know, in one, but. Hey man, he got Sidichai, and I'm not going up against Sidichai, man. Sidichai to me, to me, I think Sidichai is the best, is the best uh, lightweight out there, or featherweight in one, whatever you want to say. But basically, the best 70, 70 kilograms out there. Right? Let's keep it. Let's say that one. All right. Um, saying he's a, he's a southpaw, which always makes it tricky, you know. And like you said, man, do his leg kicks, or should I say, even as his leg kicks, his, his his body kicks, man. His his left his left leg round kick is just dangerous. You know, and like I said, he, he does have good pressure. He's a good counter puncher, which is what I see happening in this fight because Typhon Oskin, like I said, he, he is aggressive. He will go after it. And I think that's what's going to, that, I think that's what's, I think that's going to play in the City Chai's game plan where he's going to go in for his count. He's going to go in for his combos. City Chai's going to block and counter. He's going to throw that, he's going to throw that round kick in, and then, and then Oskin's going to have to respect that power. Um, so yeah, that's that, that that's 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 really how I see that fight going. Absolutely, and, and, and just in, in, in traditional Thai tradition, City Shai has nearly doubled the amount of fights of his opponent, who is uh, is a world champion. But I, I might pick. I, I'm wondering about City Shai. He's getting on in year. I mean, he's not getting on in years, but in fight years, he's ancient, right? He's been around for a decade. And these Thai guys, they fight so much, they get ground down mid thirties. You're almost retired at that point. And I think he might be kind of reaching that point, but I think Tafun, he is, this is his major opportunity to really put a stamp on that. I am a player in the kickboxing world. I think all the pressure is going to be on him. This is a major opportunity for him. If he wins this fight, he is in the conversation for the rest of his life, right? Yeah. I might actually pick him. I, I think he might be doing, this might be good timing for him. He might, it's just, I, I think 
he's going to put enough pressure on himself. And I think he might succeed in this fight. I'm going to say it might be some cr something crazy, like a split decision, something very close like that. He's not going to dominate by any means, but I just, it might be his time. You know what I mean? I mean, no, like you said, like I said, like I said, like I said, I've been a fan of Oskins. Like I said, Oskins, Oskins de is definitely on the rise. I mean, in case it's just one of the things like, hey, man, you know, you know, you know, uh, to, you know, to be, you know, to be the man, you got to beat the man. So, yeah. I mean, so, I mean, hey, man, if, if he's able to get past it, child, yo, he's definitely put his name in the conversation. I mean, I mean, you just you just talked about it at, at um, the last fight we were talking about with uh, Gregorian beating beating Sidichai. Now, which, of course, yeah. I'm kind of going to give Sidichai a little a little bit of a pass on that one, because just think about, it, man, those two those two guys have fought. Uh, was it four times? Four times, yeah. Four times. Sidichai like beat him each Three. time. Like he he just he just wasn't up for the fight. He was he was done with it. So he's like, yeah. all right, you know, you know, Murat gets this W. But I'll tell you this: Sidichai is my pick to win this whole thing. I think it's gonna be him and Murat again. Sidichai will get his revenge. He will go on and fight the champion, and then hopefully we will get Super Bond versus Sidichai, which I believe did happen once. But yeah. I I can't I can't I can't remember the result if it was a draw or if Superbon I think actually won. I think Superbon the last won. time you are correct. The last time that they fought, which I think was earlier this year, Superbon did defeat him. Yeah, it was last fight, twenty twenty uh, July. Uh, yeah, Superbon did win that matchup. Uh, and th yeah, so that's see, this is the interesting thing that I, I'm seeing it play out entirely different than you. But these are such close matchups that I wouldn't be surprised if it worked out that way. If you get the tournament winner versus the champion and Super Bond versus City Chai, I didn't pick either of those guys to win, but I wouldn't even be surprised. This is a great yeah. tournament. But I'm just saying, but you think about you think about with, with City Chai, it would be his revenge tour because he get it because he get his revenge on Marat and then yeah. he get his revenge on on the Super Bond. And I bet, hey man, do, do that. That's a good role for me. So in the final, like, this is the thing that we mainly talk about that I mentioned earlier in the show in kickboxing, that you usually don't have storylines play out with each other. Usually guys fight each other five times. Like, like this would be the fifth time that Marat and City Chai would meet. Yes, it's in the finals, and it's a much better storyline now. But yeah, City Chai has beaten them three times already. Do you think he gets a revenge on Marat is what you're definitely saying? Even though he lost the last matchup, you just think mentally he was somewhere else, right? Yeah, that's that 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 is what I think. It's because it, it's one of those things. Like I think the same thing. Um, I want to say the same thing happened with uh, Anissa Meskin when 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 mm -hmm. when she had fought uh, a Tiffany Van Su. She basically said the same thing. It was like, yo, I beat this girl two times already. Don't really want to fight her, but that was the only person that they gave me. So we fought. I really wasn't there. Yeah, she won. She beat me. But hey, if we were to fight again, I would definitely destroy her. I think it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, like sometimes you just get that fatigue. Was like, yo, like I've already fought this person. I don't really want to fight them again, but it's the only person that you got. And of course, I'm sure, you know, you need to get paid, you need to get your money. So, hey, you mm -hmm. take the fight. It is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. And that's the way the fight world goes. Like, especially w when we're doing kickboxing in Muay Thai, you got to take those fights. Yep. Uh, moving down the card, we got Sammy Sana versus, um, uh, I'll just say Al Alizov. <laughs> I'm not yep. going to screw up the first name and embarrass myself. Sana will have tons of experience coming into this matchup. Lost in his last fight and will be fighting hard to get back in the win column. Alizov is an extremely accomplished kickboxer. K1 champion, World Grand Prix winner, undefeated from 2014 to 2018. Uh, his only loss in that time was to Petrosian. Sana... Uh, Sammy San, he likes to send in the mid-range and try to counter-strike strong, powerful roundhouse-style kicks from his rear side. Alizov, he, he loves stance switching and power striking. He's fast. He usually does high and low mixing combination. He's always kind of looking for the knockout kind of fighter. He wants to finish fights. Uh, opens mainly with body work, whether it's his knee, his teep. He loves a good uppercut to the body. He's a really cool fighter. I'm going to pick Alizov. I think this is, a, this is one of the easier picks on the card, but what do you think of this matchup? Nah, same. I agree with you. Uh, I'm going. I'm going. Uh, I'm. Uh, I was off as well. Uh, like, say, like I tell people all the time, man. Body shots in fights. This man loves to go to the body. He loves yeah. to go to the body. All right. So I'm saying, man, you get somebody good in the liver. You get somebody with a good knee, knee right to their belly. It's it's lights out. It's done. I I tell people all the time, like especially like my students. I tell people, people would rather get hit in the head than than take a body shot. Saying that stuff will linger with you, you know. So I, so again, I think I, I mean, I, I want to say, man, just like Marat and and Sour, how I said, I think, yeah. um, I, I, I think, I think this fight could, could be over in the first round as well. But I totally co-signed with you, and I thought that was just a weird thing that was wrong with me. But in my amateur boxing days, like I, I fought some guys who were on the Canadian Olympic boxing team and stuff like that. And sometimes you kind of like get in a clinch with a guy and start chatting, and I was like, "Man, can you hit me in the head again? I'm so tired of being hit in the body. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just absolutely yeah. hate it. Hit me in the head. I don't care. My skull's fine, but the body, man, it hurts." Yep. 
<laughs> uh, moving down the card, we have Enrico Kiel versus David Kiria. They have a German versus a Georgian, both European champions. Kiel loves forward pressure. Even if he gets hit, he loves to do it. David Kiria lost his last fight to Petrosian. Uh, I think this fight, both the guys are going to stand in the pocket and be trading combinations back and forth. I think this is a matter of who lands first. I might just edge it to Kiel based on experience, but I don't entirely know on this matchup. How do you see this one playing out? No, nah, you're right. Um, I think most people probably will probably will go with Keel, but me, I'm actually going to go with uh, uh, David Carrier. The reason why is because I've known him since his glory days. Um, I didn't know his glory run really wasn't that well, but then but then he went to Cunlin. Then it mm -hmm. then it kind of seemed like he had a uh, a uh, resurgence there. You know, he he was getting he was getting wins, getting his hand raised, uh, and then and then boom, then and then and then now. Then now he's in one now. I think he, you know, like I said, he's kind of, he's kind of been on a, on a on a up on a uptick as well. So mm -hmm. I'm probably gonna go with Kerry on this one. Uh, like I said, man, I mean, he's you know he's a Georgian. You know, they're tough guys as well. Uh, so I think he might edge it out. Awesome stuff. That is great. Now in the tournament final, you're still picking City Chai to win, and then you're picking the champion to be Super Bond. Absolutely love it. I think those are great picks, and it makes it quite interesting because I picked a bunch of different guys. So th this is such a good tournament. This is the one championship might actually be the best kickboxing card of the entire year. You know what I mean? Like this is yeah. a really good one. This is awesome stuff. But now moving on, are you ready to move on to Glory Collision Three? Yes. Let's break down the fight that had hype, but then didn't come to be, and I think. That might have been a good thing because we originally had planned, but uh, sorry, not Bonahari. Rico Verhoeven was going to fight Alistair Overeem in the main event. Alistair Overeem, he was a K1 champion. He was a dream champion. He was a strike force champion. He collected belts everywhere he fought other than in the main organization's pride in the UFC. He was a Dutch fighting legend. He made his debut in 1999. But I think in this matchup, I mean, Rico Verhoeven, he's, he is in the argument for being one of the greatest kickboxers of all time. I wouldn't make the argument, but he's certainly in the discussion. He's beaten a who's who in the last few years. He's an absolute power striker. He's a massive man. He's strong everywhere. He throws a little bit unorthodox, but still a little bit traditional Dutch style. Uh, Alistair Overeem, we've known from his style for years that he is best in the clinch. Even going back to his fights with like Vitor Belfort years and years ago, he was best in the clinch getting guillotines. In his fights with Brock Lesnar, he was best in the clinch. His fights in K1, he always excelled in the clinch. I think him having an injury and canceling this matchup may have done himself a favor because I think he would have got embarrassed against Rico Verhoeven, but maybe I'm wrong. What What do you think? No, I think the same thing. Uh, I think, I I mean, again, I am a fan of Alistair Overeem, but I think him coming back... Going against Rico, I think I think Rico would would have would just would have just blew right through him. You know, it, it's one of those things where it's like say like say he's good in the clinch, but how is he standing standing at bay? You know, with his combinations, like saying man, Rico Rico moves different. You know, he's he's not, not your he's not your typical heavyweight where you're just gonna stand in front of you and try to trade shots. He moves around, makes angles, has good combinations. You know, so I really I I mean I I really I really think it would have been it would have been bad news for for Overeem. Yeah, and I completely agree. And I would have loved the storyline of Overeem getting a title in his home nation, winning on a major card like that, and then retiring with a huge title. But I, I can't see it happening. Rico Verhoeven is a man in his prime right now. He's been on a run for the last few years. He, he, he is honestly in a clinch setting. He might be stronger than Alistair Overeem, right? He's a monster of a human being, and he's beaten a, a who's who from guys like Badahari to Peter Eretz to Semi. I think he beat Semi Schultz a few years ago as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, just an absolute amazing run. Now he's going where instead in the main event, we might have a better matchup, but with a lot less hype. I know people are a lot less excited for this matchup and it's arguably better. Uh, ben Sadiq is the late fill in. So we get a trilogy. So Sadiq had uh, beaten Rico Verhoeven. Um, Jamal Ben Sadiq had beaten Rico Verhoeven back in 2011. Rico Verhoeven got his revenge in 2017. Both of them were exciting, close matchups. Ben Sadiq had gotten a knockdown on Verhoeven in tw the 2017 matchup before getting knocked out because Verhoeven is, he, he does the Dutch style of like left, right, switch, and then you cover up and shell up. Ben Sadiq is an aggressive fighter who always comes forward. He gave Rico Verhoeven absolutely no space to breathe, constant pressure, constant kicks, mixing high, low combinations. And he actually almost got the finish in that 2017 fight. So now he's coming back. We're going to finish the trilogy. This is a monster of a man at 6'9, 275 pounds. Ben Sadiq is absolutely massive. But there is some weird stuff with he hasn't fought since 2018 because he's been out due to injury. He was arrested. He was busted for steroids in 2015. 
it's kind of a weird fight given the timeline. I love it on paper, but once you start digging to the second layer, the next layer down, I start to think like, man, Rico's probably going to absolutely murder this man. What do you think yeah. of the matchup? I mean, it's crazy because, like I said, really, like this fight was supposed to happen because Sadiq had won that tournament, like you said, in 2018, but he actually broke his arm in that tournament, which was crazy. Yeah. You know how you know the the way the way how he won it, but. Then, but but then like you said he had he had he uh, he, he, had, he had the steroid thing come up so so that so that so that, so that took him out and and I, and I really and I really want to say I think that's why that's why they really did uh, uh the Rico Badahari two fight instead because yeah. I want to say that uh 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 Sadiq he was he was supposed to take that spot but they had to take him out because of uh, because of his issues yeah. um also too I want to say in that time I think I think Jamal Ben Sadiq has actually like changed his diet. Cause I, I do, I do want to say that I think he is looking a little slimmer, you know, he's looking like a better in shape. I can't remember if he changed gyms as well. I want to, I want to say that he did, okay. but I'm not too sure. Cause I don't really follow him like that. I just know little things that I, I, I that I've seen. Right. Um, but in a way, like I still want to say that this is still Rico's fight because usually the way how it goes in a trilogy is the person who wins the second fight yep. usually wins the third fight as well. Yep. You know, um, now, like, like, now, 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 like you said, right? That second fight, Jamal Ben Sadiq, he got that quick knock, that quick knockdown in the first round. But after that, it was all Rico the whole time. Rico straight starched him, and then boom, finished round. I mean, I'm sorry, the fifth round he finished him. You know, like, so I mean, I don't know if maybe Ben Sadiq had got tired and he was just done after that first round because 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 he wanted that knockout. But I mean, I still, I, I mean. It's so great. Like we talk about heavyweights, trilogy fights. Like I said, we just had Wilder Fury. That was good. Now we got this one coming up. I mean, hey, heavyweights, they're doing their thing right now in kickboxing and in boxing. It's beautiful. Man, it has been a while since the heavyweight world has been interesting. And it's funny because mixed martial arts heavyweights, I would say, is outside of the top three. It's not that fun. Like who cares about like, you know what I mean? In the UFC, who cares about a bunch of those guys? But in boxing and kickboxing, heavyweights are looking really good right now. I absolutely co signed. It's been a long time since heavyweight kickboxing was fun. And heavyweight kickboxing has been, uh, I mean, it was at the forefront for, since like Ernesto, who's golden age, right? We talked about heavyweight kickboxing. It's been something else. It's another world and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, this fight, yeah, I completely agree with you. Rico Verhoeven is going to walk away with this fight. He's going to win the trilogy. He's going to win the cha- defend his championship in that this fight. I think it was like his 10th championship defense or something absolutely insane like that. But do you rank Rico Verhoeven amongst some of the greatest kickboxers of all time? Because he has wins over guys like Peter Ar- Peter Arts, uh, uh he was losing both times to Badahari because he's a little bit of a slow starter. Badahari, yeah. of course, got injured and then got knocked out in those fights. Uh, he beat Sammy Schilt and stuff like that. But he kind of beat those guys in later on in their careers, not necessarily in their prime. Do, do you rank Rico Verhoeven among some of the greats or the greatest uh, of all time? Still, he, like, he still is. Like, you can't, you, like, if you just look at his style, look how he fights. I mean, like, the two Badahari fights, like, Badahari is still young. You know, it's not like he's in his 40s or 50s or anything like that fighting. Like, Bob Hart, I think, is like 35, 36. Yeah, he, made his, he made his day one, uh, K1 debut at age 19, right? Yeah. He's been fighting forever. Yeah, anyway, yeah. go on. Yeah, you, know, you know, so, I mean, so, I mean, like, that, like, that's why, that's why him finding Bowder was so big because it was like, well, it is somebody of the old guard, but they're still at a good age where you can really do a good gauge. Now, mm-hmm. you could do, now, you could really say the same thing about, about Overeem as well. If you want to, like, I think Overeem's on, like, what 43 maybe but he's still you know he's still good you know he's still young he's still active um but yeah no i i don't i don't i don't knock it against him like to me man rico rico has good movement good power you know um i i i was still i was still put him up there man he, he's like saying he is he is right now the king of kickboxing he, he, he is the star of the netherlands you know uh I mean, like pound for pound, is he is he up there? I mean, he's definitely he's definitely top ten right now. I wouldn't have him as number one, but mm-hmm. he could be maybe maybe seven or you know seven or six. Yeah, and I, I can agree with that. I think there's some absolutely amazing fighters in the history of kickboxing, guys like Ernesto Hoos and Peter Arts, who have more titles to their name and maybe competed at a better time. But you can't doubt Rico Verhoeven. He's beaten everybody that they put in front of him. And he's just. And, he, and style wise, like you said, if you took that style and put it in another era, he probably still would have excelled in pretty much any era. Uh, moving down the card in the co-main event, uh, a fight that's just 
a fight and that's cool and i you know i it's a crappy matchup i don't understand gokan saki is making his return to kickboxing the mini tyson from turkey has come back and he's gonna fight uh james mcsweeney what the fuck what is this? Man, Brandon, what the hell is this? Go tell me about this matchup. Like, I don't know. I think Gokhan's going to kill this guy in the first round. This I mean, no, hey, I mean, well, one, one, yeah, I remember what McSweeney has been active. Saki hasn't. All right. No, no, McSweeney, that's right. That's right. McSweeney has been, has been fighting still. Uh, what was it? Didn't he just have a fight with, um, I don't know, was, well, I don't know if it was this year. It might have been a last year, but he just had a fight with, uh, wasn't it, uh, David uh, Alunga? And again, uh, he, I think he had a fight with him. Uh, so he's been fighting in MMA. 2019 was his last fight. A couple of losses there. And then he moved over to kickboxing. His last fight in kickboxing was a loss to Ishmael Lunt in 2019 as well. He fought twice in 2019. Uh, and now he's fighting Gokan Saki is what I have here. He I, I, I want to I wanna say that I think he had a fight with David Alunga, but I could be wrong. It, I, I, but it, might, it might not be there. It might, be there. It might not be there because I remember like that's why I think Alunga – has some like issues with glory because I think he took a fight and they were said like, nah, you shouldn't have, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. So, so I mean, James McKinney, like you said, he's a lot busier fighter. Gokan Saki, he took off a few years training for MMA and then had a couple of quick fights in the UFC. And now he's taking some years off and now he's entering back into kickboxing. He's certainly getting on in years, got a lot of damage to his name. I don't know if those training years, training for MMA fights has been favorable for his kickboxing style. But if I were to imagine this man in his prime, I think this is a good night for him, and I think this is a good fight for him, but that might not be the case. Do you, yeah. do you, are you thinking McSweeney for this one? I mean, I, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, I feel like I want to go with McSweeney because it's just, it, it's like, it's the same thing, like, 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 mm -hmm. like, like how I, like how we, like how I said for, for MMA, for like the Robbie Lawler, uh, Nick Diaz fight. Robbie Lawler was active. Yes, Robbie Lawler's on a down slope, but he was active. Diaz was not. Same thing here. McSweeney might be on the down slope, but he's been active. He's been in there. Saki's been been resting, what, or whatever he's been doing. And plus two to me, usually Saki to me, I think he, I mean, I know he has fought at heavyweight before, but he's also done light heavyweight. I think he's better at light heavyweight than he is at heavyweight. But then again, though, I don't think I don't think McSweeney is a big heavyweight because I think McSweeney has also done maybe maybe, maybe some time at at light heavyweight as well. Uh, but. I man, I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 interested to watch. I really don't know who to pick, but I probably I probably will lean towards McSweeney more just just because again he's been active. Yeah, and that's the thing. When you go down Gokhan Saki's record, he's fought who's who. He's fought all the greats. He's fought through many eras of kickboxing. He's he's consider he's quite small for heavyweight at six foot even. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you gotta you gotta think. He's, I mean, I mean gotta, also too. Also, too, like this with this news going on, because it was it, like saying this was breaking news about Gohan Saki resigning. But the thing was, like, rumors was that he was going to resign, but mm -hmm. he was going to fight at that at their show in the beginning of 2022. Then out of nowhere, it was like, oh, no, he's fighting collision. So which one which one mm -hmm. makes me think maybe this is why he's fighting at heavyweight instead of light heavyweight, because maybe he would have done light heavyweight if they would have given him the time. But with, you know, uh uh, Overeem falling out. They're like, hey, Saki, can you maybe step in, get some more star power there, you know? And hey, man, we'll just do that heavyweight, and we'll give you, and, and we'll give you McSweeney, which, like you said, you think might be a, a, a easy fight for him, and they, and they might be thinking the same thing. But hey, man, it's the fight game, you know? You never know what's That's gonna happen. Man, I think you're 100% correct with this because uh, Bellator used to do this years back whenever they were trying to really court over UFC fans. They put like Machitas and they would put like Brothers of Hoist. They would put like random Gracies on the card just to really draw in names. And I think this is an example of that. If we're going to have a former UFC fighter. Uh, so in the co-main event, we'll also have a former UFC fighter versus Gokan Saki, a former UFC fighter. We'll just try to really get them all in. I think that was Glory's plan to so try to put as much name power to draw eyes in as much as possible here. But yeah, Gokan, awesome fighter. If you haven't seen him in his prime, oh my God, he's awesome to watch. He's Yep. He's absolutely sick. Uh, moving down the card, we have uh, Benny. Ab uh, I can't say the last name, but Benny. He's fresh off his knockout over uh, Badahari. He is on a win streak right now. He's looking quite good, and he switched training camps recently. He's actually been training with Rico Verhoeven coming into this fight, and he's going to be fighting Antonio Plazabat. Um, I'm picking Benny in this one. I think this is a great time for him. Switching training camps and training with Rico Verhoeven will do nothing but help him in this fight. He knocked out Badahari in his last fight in what was actually a good fight um, in uh, but yeah, Plaza is former K1 heavyweight champion as well. Um, but yeah, what do you see in this fight? What do you think? 
Uh, I'm going. With, I'm going with my boy Attic Bowie. Attic Bowie. That's how you say. It. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, Plaza Bot's good, man. Like he, he really, he really showed out his last fight. Uh, I think this, 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 this is another step up in competition for him. But to me, uh, Attic Bowie's right there. To me, Attic Bowie is the number two heavyweight in the division. It goes Rico, and it goes Attic Bowie. And just to let you know, uh, Attic Bowie has actually been training with with uh, with the Rico Verhoeven for years. Um, oh, okay. yeah. Oh, you know, they've been they've been been training together for years. That's why that's why like they've been talking about them fighting each other, but it just hasn't happened because Glory has Glory hasn't made it yet. Because, like I said, Rico, I think after after they last fight because because they did fight two times. I want to say after their second fight when Rico knocked them out. uh, I think after that, that's when uh, Attic Bowie had uh, had uh, had uh, joined the team. So 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 so, so they've been training together uh, for for a really long time. Um, but yeah, no nah, man. I think I think I think Attic Bowie. I think Attic Bowie is just gonna be too much. Uh, like I said, man. Like he he, ha- he hasn't he hasn't really been kickboxing for that long either. You know, I think I think maybe I think maybe like over five years. You know, he, he's really been into the sport. You know, something like that. Uh, but yeah, I just I just think Attic Bowie is gonna be too much for him. Uh, he definitely has the power for sure. Uh, I'm saying, man, he, yo, he is a big boy. Um, so I think, I, I just, I just think Attic Bowie, I think Attic Bowie's gonna, gonna get this W and then, I mean, depending on what they want to try to do with Overeem, I mean, he could be getting his title shot after this one. That's absolutely true. I assume that Glory is not going to just let the Overeem fight drift away into the distance. They're going to want to set it up. I thought they were going to do the Badahari fight, but they wasted no time in getting Overeem right into a title. But I think that Badahari versus Overeem fight might be what they want to do. However, if they, if Benny wins this fight and they want to set up a Benny versus Bada a rematch, I, I mean, there's this is the thing. Heavyweight's fun. You can pretty much throw any of these names in a hat, pull them out, and I'm cool with that matchup. But do you think I, they fought twice in the past? Do you think Benny and Rico are not going to fight? They've been training together since their last fight. You said, which is six years ago now, almost seven years ago. Not they, they, they. I, I want to say not they, but I want to say the coach because mm-hmm. I want to say was it? I think. Maybe after Benny's last fight, um, I, I think I think they maybe brought it up to him when you know when he beat Badahari, and I think his coaches said like, "Oh, when the fight gets announced, that's when we'll talk about it." But we're not gonna we're not gonna speculate or anything like that. So basically, I think I think they will be fine with it. They'll maybe split up, or Benny will go somewhere else and train for this fight. But as of right now, I think I want to say that if the fight is to happen, it will happen. Like they're not gonna stop each other. From you know, from 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 uh, uh, from fighting. Yeah, no, absolutely. And he's beaten everybody else in the division at this point. I mean, once you beat, get Jamal Ben Sadek out of the way, the only guy left is is Benny. Like Arcadius, he, yeah, he just had the great win over Bada, but he's already lost to Benny a few years ago as well. Uh, so it'll be fun to see what they do and whatever they're into. I am excited for. And then we have hot. Ha- sorry, Hamcha versus Dannenberg in this. What do you see in this matchup? We got a top welterweight versus a gentleman who's coming into the division. What do you see in this matchup? It's a fun fight as well. Yeah, man, this is a good fight. Uh, like I said, uh, Hamcha has just been on a tear. Like to me, he is like the welterweight uh, Alex Pereira, where he's just dropping dudes in the first round. Like that's mm-hmm. all this guy. That's all this guy's been doing. Just not just dropping dudes in the first round. Um, I mean, he really, he really to me is everybody's number one contender. For the welterweight championship, we don't know what's what's going on with that since like Cedric Dumbe says he says he's retired, but I haven't seen Glory come out with anything to make it official. Like 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 I said, man, when when when, when Dumbe had uh had announced it and I saw it, you know, I saw the video. I really I really just thought he was joking. You know, he was just having some fun. But then a couple of outlets were kind of running with it, so I'm like, oh, maybe it is true. But I've yet to see Glory say anything. So who knows? You, you know, so but to me, Hamcha gets past his win. He's either he's either going to be fighting Dume for the title, or he's going to be fighting somebody for the title. But that's the thing of right now. Even on their website, they've removed uh, Alexander Pereira, but they still have Cedric Duambe there. And I like Duambe a lot. He developed such a fun style that, like I, I've described to my friends, it's like he's he's a bomber. Like he just absolutely throws power and finds these major opportunities. Do you think he when? When we look at success of kickboxers switching into MMA, do you think Duwambe is going to, if if he enters, do you think he's going to follow more of the success of Gokan Saki or the se- success of Israel Adesanya? What, what's your, what do you think? To be honest with you, the thing is like I don't really know because the thing is like the what if it, the thing that's so funny is like in kickboxing apparently like which which I don't know if it's true or not, but I guess you can see is like the dude apparently has no coach, like has no kickboxing coach. He just trains with his friends. 
Apparently. What? <laughs> what yeah, apparently, that? like, yeah, like that's like, like I mean, I like, I like, I've heard that, I've heard him say that, you know, but it's like, is it really true? I don't really know. Um, you know, I mean, I could see him following in the footsteps of like, of like a Izzy, you know, being being like mm-hmm. that. You know, but again, too, it's all about the matchups who you get matched up with. Are you getting matched with a with a wrestler, a jujitsu guy, another striker? You know, it, it could be different. Like, I mean, hey, Myrtle Grunhart, he just he just made his MMA debut. So, I mean, hey, I haven't seen anything official where like, oh, hey, Cedric Dumbe has signed has ha, you, you know has signed with another MMA promotion. Saying everybody everybody can talk, but who knows? I mean, hey, man, this could be this could be maybe a a um a um. A uh, a uh, power play by Dumbe to say, "Hey, uh, Glory, maybe you should uh, pay me some more money." You know, I don't know. And that's absolutely true. And I think that might be a good point when we're seeing a lot of other champions are leaving for other organizations or even other sports. It might be a money move, and that's absolutely okay. He's 29 years old, so if he did switch to MMA, I think he does have a lot of time to actually put together a lot of skills. Whereas Gokan Saki, his style in kickboxing was to use the gloves, get in close. That doesn't translate to the small gloves of MMA, and I think he was a little bit too old to actually get good at a lot of stuff. Duambe, if he wanted to switch to MMA, he could probably rank in top 10 within you know, five years or so. He, he yeah. has time to develop. And I think very similarly with uh, Alex Pereira switching to MMA. He has a good style where he's using uh, defense uh, from distance. He's using angles a lot more effectively. He's kind of a, a one-strike counterpuncher, similar to what we saw with guys like Anderson Silva. I think his style is going to translate very well to MMA. But what do you think? Is Alex Pereira going to get... I mean, he... It, did, did we ever get word? Is Pereira in light heavyweight or is he a middleweight? I actually, I, I, I was looking it up and I couldn't uh, find anything. He's at middleweight. middleweight. Yeah, he's fight. He's fight. He's, he's fighting. He's the. He's actually gonna be the feature fight uh, of the prelims uh, for the uh, UFC. Uh, was it two sixty eight pay per view November six MSG? Ooh, that's gonna be good, man. At middleweight, there's not a lot of amazing wrestlers outside of Derek Brunson. Aside from that, it's pretty much a striker's division, and he could do really well if he had, you know learns a couple of new tricks here and there and develops his style. I, I think Pereira could do very well. What do you think of his chances? And I mean, yeah, like I said, he's been hanging out with uh, Glover Teixeira, so you know they they they've been helping each other out. So I mean, hey, Glover is not a bad guy to uh, train with. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Okay, so we've covered off Glory Collision three. We've covered off the hypothetical fights that may have happened. We're talking about one championship for strike. This has been kicking it with Tim Wheaton and the mechanic. Um, tell the people, man, that's about forty five minutes. There, anything else you want to cover off? Tell the people where they can find more of you. What do you got going on in your life? Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, hey, people, just let you know, I hope you guys listen to this show, pay attention to it, saying we're going to talk about kickboxing. We're going to educate you guys, let you know that kickboxing is the most exciting sport, right, in in the world. Like I'm saying, a lot of people always like sloppy stand-up fights in MMA, kickboxing <laughs> where you really want to watch some exciting stand-up fights. Everybody likes stand-up combat. Kickboxing is where it is. You get punches, kicks, uh, knees, you know, we're going to talk some Muay Thai. They got elbows there as well, you know. You know, we might talk some line fight in the future. Uh, you know, give them some love as well. Uh, but just so just remember that. And of course, remember, you can always get our merchandise at fighterfirst.shop. Remember, that's where we are for all our merchandise. You get the mechanic collection, right? I got my shirts there uh, or, or, any, or anything else in the shop is there. And of course, you guys can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at B Catino TSMA. Um, and hey, please like, subscribe, comment. And uh, let us know, man. Jump in. Let's build kickboxing. Let's get this kickboxing community growing. I completely agree. I, every time I watch kickboxing, I think like, man, this is the fuck. This is this is excuse my language, but this is the best. This is the paramount of combat sports right here. Absolutely love it. You can find more of me, Tim Wheaton MMA, on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, but Brendan, before we leave, you have a fight coming up. You have a fight. Is it? It's official now, right? You got you got a fight in the next couple of months. No, it's not yet. Uh, yeah. Never mind. Sorry, shut no, up, I'm everyone. Just, everyone, I, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all right. No, I was supposed to fight in November, uh, but fell through. I haven't got matched up. I guess the guys I wanted, they maybe said they didn't want the smoke. So now we're hoping for December, uh, but I'll let you guys know. Awesome stuff. So we'll find out more going on in the future. Folks, stay tuned to the Fighters First Network. We're going to have a lot more going on. Um, and yeah, thanks for tuning in, folks. Brandon, last word? Hey, man. Always a pleasure hanging out with you, Tim. Uh, thank you for, for doing this show with me. And like I say, guys, like, subscribe, comment. Let's get this kickboxing community growing. Cheers, folks. Thanks so much, man.